Doctor, thank you very much for your time this morning. Uh, I know that you led the, the trials in Europe over the, the last year, 18 months or so. I'm just following up on that in this interview, and I wonder if you could tell me a little bit about your role here at University of Ghent Hospital, please. Uh, I started in uh, 1992. I took over from Professor Klaassens and uh, have been uh, here working essentially in uh, knee uh, surgery and uh, traumatology as well. Uh, and we have several departments that uh, take care of other uh, particular diseases in shoulder, hip and spine and hand surgery and pediatrics. So I run a, bit, a little bit in the knee clinic, if you could say so. And it's the knee we're here to talk about today. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the meniscus and a meniscus tear. What is it? Well, this is a, a long time issue. Um, it's a cartilage, a semilunar cartilage that seems to be uh, very important in uh, distributing the load in the knee joint. Uh, when I was in training, we removed all these things and uh, most of the time things went well. However, we saw that over time, a number of knee joints uh, disintegrated, degenerated because of the meniscus had been removed, probably because sometimes the, there was some axial deviation, maybe because there was some overweight, maybe because these people uh, did too much. Usually everything when, goes well when you remove a piece of the meniscus, but sometimes uh, the knee is the culprit and then things go wrong. And uh, we need something to fill in that gap for these patients. So how does a meniscus tear actually occur? It's related to overload and a twisting injury very often. The foot is locked into the ground by doing one uh, or other maneuver and then the body goes the other way and it twists and it tears and usually it tears where the meniscus is weak so once you get a little bit older it tears easier than it is torn in, in a young individual even though these young individuals when they do uh, sports like football here in Europe or rugby uh, these tears are complete and then you have to remove quite a bit of the meniscus and so that's uh, also an indication to think about avoiding degeneration and do something about this. Is this an injury that affects more men than women? It is uh, I would say more in the men than in women shall we say that uh, men are a little bit more physical as you take it overall in the working force Ladies are a little bit more gentle, but nevertheless, we see also ladies who are doing sports like football and then ruder sports, and they, they get injured as well. Okay. So when the meniscus is damaged, what further damage occurs? When you remove a piece and then remove like a buffer in between the, the femur, the thigh and the tibia, the, the leg, and the cartilage has to wear this, it, it, it's overloaded, and if these people go on with, with sports, with overload, uh, and if they're a little bit of axial deviation, then they, they break down their cartilage more than if the meniscus was still present. So in these particular cases, um, one may do something to replace this tissue that is missing. You pioneered ActiveFit in Europe. How have things progressed over the last year to 18 months? Well, uh, we've been very strict with the indications. It was not very easy because uh, it's, uh, we think very highly of this product, but it's, uh, you have to keep uh, to very strict indications to find out whether or not it will help. And uh, as we went over the, the cases with several uh, good surgeons all over Europe, uh, we feel that um, the pain has been relieved in the majority of cases. Uh, very well, because that is always the reason why patients come to you. It's, it hurts, doctor, and you should do something about this. And uh, I think uh, we, we've had very good results in that respect, for sure. Okay. What's ActiveFit like to work with? It's, uh, it's um, uh, an, I would say it's an easy product to, to deal with. It's a strong product. It's this polyurethane substance is... Uh, looks and feels a little bit like cartilage. Of course, it is nothing to do with cartilage, but it's something that will uh, allow the body to grow in and, and form a, a tissue that is as strong as the meniscus over time. And that is what we expect from it. Uh, but nevertheless, as you insert it, it's still polyurethane the first six to one year almost. And uh, so you have to have a strong tissue that will kind of immediately allow people to weight beer on this and, 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 and be active again. You don't, cannot have them one year out of a job because of that. 
So you need strong tissue and tissue that allows for our cells and to grow into, and that's important. When is it a, a suitable solution? When uh, it is a suitable solution, it is when you have a partial meniscectomy and when people have pain. And uh, it's, it's, it's very important that we should not use it in every resected meniscus because most of the time uh, these partial meniscectomies will evolve well if people are a little bit careful. But if pain starts, say after six months when patients still have pain or are invalidated, then uh, we have a good uh, indication for inserting and using these new products like Tantafit. Okay. Have you found any problems with the implant at all? We haven't found uh, no, we haven't found pro not really problems with the issue, but uh, surgery sometimes is tricky. The surgery uh, is, you, you know, you have to operate sometimes in uh, huge knees and in, in tight knees, uh, in unstable knees that you have to stabilize after that. So it's not always an easy surgery. It seems like just inserting a piece of tissue, but it's not always so easy. So you need some experience, not only for the indication, but also for inserting it. But it hasn't harmed people at all. What do you feel are the main benefits of ActiFit? The main benefits is that uh, you have a solution in uh, situations where you did not have a solution earlier. Um, in these partial metastatomized knees, with patients being active, uh, they cannot go back to work, they cannot play sports. And now, uh, potentially, we have a solution for helping them with not an easy surgery, but not a very aggressive surgery. Replace what is missing uh, with arguments that for the future it will replace the meniscus and have these people go on for a number of years. Uh, like right now, we would have to say refrain from being active, refrain from doing sports. And today, in 21st century, is not really something that you just tell your patients and they will not accept it. So is this a lifetime solution for patients? I do not uh, know if it is a lifetime solution. Of course, we have no crystal ball in that respect, um, but uh, it could be. But we're not very sure because, of course, if you replace a meniscus and say it's healed, then be people do crazy things again and they may tear it again they, like they would tear the, their meniscus on the other knee. So you're never sure. You, you, you let them do again things that may hurt their knees. But that's not a reason for not trying to, uh, having them uh, in better shape. Has the procedure changed much since you started the trial to where we are today? Well, we know where the, the tricks and the tips are now and the little problems. Uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's tricky to do that in a very tight knee, so we know we have to release a little bit of the ligament. For instance, we know that you could do that in association with an unstable knee joint, but then again, it's very difficult to insert it. So maybe you should uh, do the surgery step by step, first stabilize and then do the meniscus. So we've learned that uh, day by day. And so it, 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 uh, as we can share these tips uh, in, in the surgical world and with the colleagues that have been doing this uh, surgery as well, it's improving and becoming easier, which is for the benefit of the patient. What about the rehabilitation? How's that changed? Well, uh, as I recall, the experience we have uh, for 20, 20 years now with meniscal transplants, I remember the first cases is we put them in plaster for six weeks just to make sure that nothing would go wrong with all the, uh, the, the, the problems that the immobilization may do rise. Uh, and uh, we're very strict. We've been very strict in the study with the ActiFit, but I think we may loosen up uh, and be less tight on these uh, instructions in rehabilitation. Not that I can weight beer or go back to sports earlier. That did not change, but we are not so strict on immobilization and patients like that, and we start to like that too. Would you say that ActiFit is a success? I'm sure that it is a success. But uh, surgery is indication, we should not forget that. And if you have a good indication and you have a good product, then you have very many chances that you have a good result. But if you use it just blindly in all cases without reflecting to a good indication, then your surgery will be average, uh, with average successes. And we have to be fair to our patients, fair to the economy, that, because that is an expensive thing as well, it's, it's surgery and uh, we should not uh, overact in the indication. So keep very low until you know better and uh, that will be for the benefit of our patients indeed.
Dr. Vedonk, thank you very much for your time this morning.